No, the lactate got me. Ah, uh, the lactate Damn fought it. back. The lactate was fighting back. Mmm, drugs. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 23 of the Coconut Curry podcast. On this episode, we discuss the NBA All-Star Game, which media is upset about that. We're going to discuss the NBA standings. We're going to discuss the Bears, number one pick dilemma, a little bit of football in there. And we're also going to discuss my favorite basketball coach, Doc Rivers. (laughs) But before we do that, if you're new around here, we are three college students at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm Justin. This is Raj and Peter. We're on all platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to us. We just chat about sports and hopefully offer a fresh new perspective. We are out of football season, which is crazy because we've been talking football for like however many months five six months straight yeah. like really nothing else between besides when uh james harden got traded to the clippers yeah. so if you like what you hear please like comment subscribe it helps us out a lot before we do before we talk about anything basketball related we got to react to comments yes, like we do every comments, week because that's yeah. my favorite pastime yes um and so last our clips last week were a little bit short but we talked about usher and yes. the bad halftime Shush. show um, so one person commented, quote, you guys were in elementary school when his music was popular. Simmer down. Okay. Um, the whole point, though, is that the Super Bowl show should be appealing to, like, everybody. Also, don't tell me that I don't know about Usher and that I wasn't a fan of him. I was bumping Usher in middle school, okay? Don't you dare assass me. And I doubt you ever listened to the Minecraft remix. So way back the- in the mine. <laughs> oh the, the Minecraft remix is like part, like a core part of our entire generation. It is. Oh my god, is was a par- huge part yes. of our generation. And yeah, is the most popular middle school, high school dance song. Dude, that played that we could have every had. single dance. Yep. Like, of our youth. Yep. Oh like, my. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Um, also, that just defeats the whole purpose. If only like millennials could enjoy the Usher halftime show, then they picked the wrong person. Um, and then someone said, haters, they jealous. I think they're referring to the fact that Usher has like a better body than all of us. Like, yeah, he does. Yeah. He's also like, like 40. Yeah, he's like 40. I hope so. Yeah, 45 years old. <laughs> and he's got a lot of money. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm jealous of a guy who has a lot of money. Like, yes. Yeah, that. Yeah, I could also say that a show, a show wasn't that good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I appreciate the haters they jealous because like about what? Yeah, like, like, of course I'm jealous of a rich dude. Yeah, like, who? Yeah, who's 45 and looks great. Yeah, and we it's have we're fair. just on a podcast. He was very sweaty though. He was very sweaty. He was very sweaty. Well, like I wasn't. I, said, I wasn't jealous about how sweaty he was. No. Unk was. Unk hasn't been out there for a minute. Yeah, it's it's been a while. He needs to get back in the lab. Um, but those were our short comments for the week. Always like start like to start the episode doing that and then now we have our disgruntled moment of the week for people who are new here we talk about things um either ourselves or other people who are angry or dissatisfied hence the word disgruntled (laughs) um peter i know you want to start us off here with your disgruntled moment of the week okay so there's a bar in pittsburgh that will remain nameless even though it starts with a C and ends with an O. It starts with with Lavo. Yeah, (laughs) it rhymes with Cavo. Um, What? What? Um, Yeah, why are the drinks so expensive, man? Like in this economy, you're you're telling me that it that any sort of drink there is nine dollars when I get like a vodka soda and it's like a cup. Not like a glass of something with six ice fluid in it. ounces. Like it's basically a large shot, and you can drink it maybe in like two sips. Like, what are we doing? We like, gotta be better. Like, I get it. You're supposed to be. Oh, it's supposed to be a higher end bar. Like, I, you're still using well vodka. All right, yeah. stop acting like you're using Grey Goose back there. You're still using that Kirkland. <laughs> yeah, we're still using like Kirkland plastic bottle tequila and like just normal everything. Like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, lower your drink prices. You're not that cool. Yeah, I, you got to be at least a seven. Got to so, be, yeah, seven bucks, perfectly reasonable. Nine is ridiculous for what they're asking for. So yeah, I got beef with Cavo. You can fight me. <laughs> Cavo is not sponsoring the podcast. Just like no. go to Beppo. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, we'll put it in that category. Yeah. Raj, disgruntled moment of the week. Uh, my disgruntled moment of the week is Jalen Brown. <laughs> oh okay um, okay i didn't see this one coming that dunk contest put your mic to your mouth that dunk contest sucked yeah oh, we'll get into that i don't know what i i was watching the highlights of it and i i was like what am i watching also who let that man into the dunk i get the whole premise behind oh trying to get more nba stars to do stuff like this 
Well, Jalen Brown wasn't wasn't the guy though. Yeah, not definitely not Jalen Brown. Um, didn't he like barely clear like a streamer? He oh, barely. We'll get into that. I have that. I have notes on the dunk okay. contest. That is five five on a good day and probably five six in whatever Jordans he was wearing. God. Nothing impressive there. I think he's five three. Oh, maybe. He's, Ka- there's I, no way Kai's Kai five Kai three. He's got to be taller than that. If he's five three, that's insane. There's no way he's five three. Five three to f- yeah. Oh wait. But remember, he's in Jordan no. and probably has a little hype booster thing inside. Oh, so. he keeps joking that he's between five feet to six three. So okay. no one actually knows how tall he okay. is. He's five six. He's like five 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 six. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, that dunk contest. Watching Jalen Brown's highlights. <laughs> those were low lights. Hey, that, you got you got in the finals. Oh boy, you got into the finals. I I also hate Jalen Brown. He has no left arm. Overpaid. <laughs> Thanks, Raj. Yep. Um, and then mine's also going to All Star Weekend, which we're going to talk about ad nauseum during this podcast. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to talk about Kenny Sp- Smith specifically because my guy probably had one of the worst commentary calls I could think about all time. So let's set the scene, right? And other people have been saying this. This is not like a hot take or anything. Let's set the scene, right? Sabrino Ionescu, Steph Curry are yeah. having a shoot shooting competition, and this is really cool for the league. It's the highest of ratings. We're all All Star Weekend. Yep. You have somebody who's off season in the WNBA coming over to play, like shoot against the best three point shooter of all time, especially in the NBA. They're shooting from the NBA three point line, and this man Kenny Smith feels like he needs to point out God. everything that's wrong with the competition or that he thinks should be changed. Like for example, pointing out she's shooting with a smaller basketball and that she has an advantage. She plays a, like they play a different sport. Like the yeah, WNBA like and the NBA yeah. aren't like they're both basketball at its core, but they're different sports. Like the game is played differently between the two mm-hmm. sports. That the lines are different. The ball size is different. Like this yeah. is not like that's like saying you're going to increase the baseball size. Yeah. And it's like oh, we're going to play baseball with cricket balls, yeah. or we're going to play it with like softball or street like, hockey balls, yeah. like. Like then that's like, oh, that's an advantage. Like it's a whole different sport. So like of course Sabrina's not gonna be shooting with the WNBA ball. She doesn't I mean with the NBA ball. She doesn't ever play with it. So yeah, it'd just like be what? a she'd be like, What am I supposed to do? Like how am I yeah, supposed to hold this ball? Terrible because she's not used to it. Yeah, and the same thing with Steph. Like if you gave him a WNBA ball, he's gonna be shooting it way too far over the net because it's way lighter and smaller. Yeah. It's just the idea that she would shoot like the idea you need to point out she's shooting with a smaller ball is ridiculous because um she just plays a different sport. And then, two, Kenny started pointing out afterwards, after Steph had won, by a mere three points. Um, which yeah, is, which not that which is, much. Yeah, like. Which is one money ball. Which is one money... Well, it's three regular shots. Yeah. A money ball and a regular shot. Or just one starry ball. Yeah. Um, by beating Sabrina by that much, he felt the need to point out that Sabrina probably should have just shot from the WNBA three-point line and not shot from the NBA yeah. three-point line after Sabrina put up a performance that would have put her in the finals of the regular competition. Which so, is nuts. You, so she just simply did not need to like shoot from the WNBA three point line. Um, that was the whole point. She didn't want to go out there to say like, Oh, I need to shoot closer. She's like, I can go shoot with Steph on this. Yeah. thing. It was a great moment for the sport. Something that was a highlight of all star game weekend. And Kenny Smith decided he just wanted to like, he just hates women. Yeah. He just wanted to like rip the whole entire competition again. Yeah. Like I hats off to Sabrina and Steph. That was like, that was actually they, fairly entertaining. It was, and they had nothing to gain from it. Steph had everything to lose. Like you go yeah, out and lose to Sabrina, yeah. and like you're supposed to be you're the biggest clown forever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and Sabrina wasn't even in the, like playing WNBA basketball because her season's over, and she, um, and she went out there and shot. So big kudos to them, yeah. uh, Kenny Smith. That was probably one of the worst. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and say like he needs to be fired or get off the call. No, like no, I mean, no, like no, I'm not no, going that far, but that's like a really bad moment and yeah. um, an All Star weekend that relatively sucked. And that wasn't the one thing that sucked. Yeah, that was not the one (laughs) thing that sucked enough that you need to point out all the things. And shout out to Reggie Miller, who kind of told Kenny Smith off on air about like, like pretty much shut the hell up about like stop. Like it was a good competition. Like the only difference was the ball size. And that that made a lot of sense for the sports they play. So disgruntled moment of the week. Love to do this segment. It's always great. But we're (laughs) going to move forward to all star weekend. Of course, we touched on a little bit of the stuff um, in our disgruntled moment of the week related to all-star weekend but we're going to get into the specifics here i would generally consider all-star weekend a flop oh big yeah, flop. that was bad. big big flop like and, nobody cared yeah and this is not like look, everyone knows all-star weekend is continuously a flop mm-hmm. but this year i think was the year where i noticed it the most because mac mcclung had his first dunk contest win last um 
<laughs> last year. So that made like, it was like, okay, a new dunk contest. He had a really yeah. good show last year. Um, the all-star game is always a uh, three point contest is always fun, whatever. But this is the year I think where you're going to start seeing the most changes come of all-star yeah, weekend definitely. because the ratings are horrible. So we can start off with the dunk contest. I don't know. Did you guys watch the dunk contest? I watched like the, maybe the beginning of it. Okay. I was like, this is terrible. I'm turning it off. Yeah. So I'm going to walk by some dunks that I wanted to point out and then I'll discuss the larger narrative about the dunk contest. The first, well, go through the contestants. Jaime Hawkes Jr., who's a rookie for um, the Miami Heat. Jacob Toppin, who's Obi Toppin's brother and plays on the uh, the Knicks. And we had Jalen Brown, of course, the right-hand legend. And Mac McClung, who's a G League player for the Orlando team. team Orlando I cannot pronounce. Magic? Nope. No, it's the Ion Sko something like. Is, yeah. that, I don't even, is that the Magic G League? He was wearing a Magic yeah. jersey. No, he was wearing his. Yeah, they were like, they're the Magic, but like for the sub team. So yeah. it's, yeah. Okay. Um, so they are the Magic, but not the Orlando Magic. Um, but that again, th- here's the problem right here. No one knows who Jacob Toppin is. No one, only people know about Mac McClung because he can dunk really cool and went to Georgetown and had a lot of highlights there. And also he's the one white guy there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, um, people know Jaime Hawkes because he played at UCLA and he's having a great season mm-hmm. on there, but he's still a rookie. And then everyone knows Jalen Brown. So you have kind of like two no names and then like two kind of guys. So anyway, the, the competition starts off. Jaime Hawkins is going to dunk over Shaq, but then he like doesn't get up enough that he like pushes in the Shaq with mm-hmm. his left hand. Shaq's glasses almost fall off his face dude, because of how much like Jaime had like push off of him and like ran into him so on painful, this dunk. Dude. It's so painful. So that's how it started. And I was already like, oh boy, like Shaq had a camera underneath his face and you see his glasses like come off his face. And I was like, oh, what the hell? Why are we trying to posterize Shaq and not yeah. go over him? <laughs> So then Jacob Toppin comes up. Oh boy, here we go. He did a cool dunk, but he bumps his guy. Like he runs, yeah. he runs his guy. Jacob's leg like kind of flies up and he has this awkward landing on one leg. It's like that, that could have totally, broken his ankle. Yeah, because he <laughs> off balance because he couldn't clear the guy he was trying to jump over. Dude, that's so So that's bad. the second like we're back to back here. Then we had a couple fine dunks whatever. Then the next dunk Jaime Hawkes puts on a backwards heat culture hat. Like, not even, like, where you can see the hair. Yeah. Like, a fitted cap. Puts it on backwards. And then puts the Mexico flag, like, in the paint. Yeah. And then just does, like, a mid-dunk. And I was like, like what was the point of all, like, the the, the props? Yeah. Jalen Brown dunked over Kai Sinet, who was sitting in a chair. And then he hit the dab. Like, and just Yeah, what? It. Is this 2016? Like, what? Ugh, like, God. He... It's been eight years. <laughs> like, let it go. Oh my uh, God, bro! All Star Weekend's just a mess every year. And then Jalen Brown then next put a glove on his left hand and then dunked with it. He's trying to do the MJ, like just. And then Mac McClung again, like he won the contest and he had some cool dunks, but he's not even in the NBA. So like it's NBA All Star Weekend, and, and you brought the G Leaguer in, yeah, because Mac was getting a little bit of run on the Sixers uh, main squad last year when he yeah. won, but he's not getting any like NBA love uh, this year, yeah, um, for the most part. So that was like the dunk contest. Um, my recommendation to the NBA is next year. And I get you guys' thoughts on this. I think they should next year hold. Like the final, it's like the Hunger Games where they're going to host the final Hunger Games at the end of Mocking J Part yeah. Two. Um, like they're going to host the final dunk contest. They're going to let in whoever they want to be in. Like we usually take four guys. You're going to open it up to the league pretty much and hope your stars join. And say okay. this will be the last ever NBA dunk contest because then you know some people will probably join to like yeah. do the last ever one. The pro- like LeBron would probably try to yep. do it at least if, like, if he's healthy. He would try yeah. to do it. I could see. A guy like maybe Giannis, even though he's not gonna be able to do really cool dunks because he's mm-hmm. already like so clo- like so close to the rim. Yeah, maybe he hops in. Um, but anyway, I would do a final dunk contest that maybe it was actually cool. Yeah, or you at least have the stars do it, even if it's eight, ten people. You figure yeah. out the structure, mm-hmm. and then afterwards cut it because I know it's supposed to be the highlight of every year. But I'm sick and tired of these props coming out that are like yeah, silly. Like just people like Jalen Brown at one point put a different person's jersey on, and I was just like. I've seen the putting a different jersey on, putting a glove on, something's on the rim. Um, Jericho Sims, was he in the dunk contest too? I can't remember. Um, Jericho Sims ends up putting his arm in the rim. Yeah. And then pulls out. It might have been last year's dunk contest. No, that was this one. I think. Okay. I don't know why I didn't see him in the highlight reel. Probably because he wasn't good. Um, 
whatever it is like recent dunk contest jericho sims puts his arm in the rim pulls out a sheet of paper that says 50 on it for a dunk that wasn't fit like it's like they're embarrassing themselves like yeah. jalen brown doing that dunk over the guy sitting in the chair like that's it, like in hitting the dab it's embarrassing for your it's stars to cringe, do that because like they don't have the creativity to do really cool dunks because there's only so much you can do and how high you can get off the ground yeah. and how many spins you can do and everything's been done and the stars aren't doing it so like i'm stop embarrassing yourself like I, I hate to be that guy that's like oh well back in my day it was better literally i don't think any dunk contest is topping the 2016 Not dunk better. contest like ever that was insane like i i genuinely don't know how you can get much better than that of like I was about to say Adam Levine. Adam, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Adam Levine. Yeah, Adam Levine. Levine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon. Um, they just went at it and like did some of the most creative and just insane dunks. Yeah, the magic mascot was on the hoverboard spinning. And yeah, he picked he it goes out. Over, and, and like Aaron Gordon goes like puts his legs like completely horizontal and goes like underneath and then goes like over. Mm-hmm. It's the most insane thing ever. My my take is like I fully get just getting rid of the dunk contest. Here's my thing. There's so many like Instagram hoopers that can dunk like maniacs. Yes. Send them in. Honestly. Like uh, who cares? And I would say like, you can just say NBA players are going to be part of the dunks. Like, yeah, they're going to jump over NBA player like classic. Maybe they maybe they'll lob it to them. Maybe they'll do this, mm-hmm. whatever, but like genuinely to get actual entertainment out of it, like bring in some of like the other guys. Yeah. I, I would say that's a good alternative. Um, if they want to highlight the players again, I don't think there's a way you can really highlight your players in a positive manner in the dunk contest as currently constructed. Yeah. Because yeah. guys just don't want to do it. And I've heard, I think maybe it's Stephen A. talk about um, how LeBron ruined the dunk contest by not joining it um, at an early age and saying, no, th- this is not a LeBron. This is a collective. The NBA players have agreed they don't want to do the dunk contest. Because they don't want to get hurt. They don't want to get hurt. They don't want to embarrass themselves. There's, they're just out there like pretty much showcasing their skills and it's hard when you're one of the bigger guys to do these dunks because you're so close to the rim like you don't get off like mac mcclung has a lot of room to do things so he has such good vertical height yeah and he has so much room to travel up into the like up to the yeah. rim so he has more time to um throw the ball up catch yeah. it again and then do a backward slam whereas, like, like how would Wemby dunk like yes. he just dunks yeah like, like and he can't jump that high because he, because he's five. seven foot five yeah, exactly. like <laughs> so it's just not conducive to today's NBA. It's just not what the players want to do. So I would stop having these players compete in the contest. Like it, it's just so like I'm embarrassed that players like Jacob Toppin are in the dunk contest. Like that's like bad. It's bad for the league. Yeah. And it's not a rip on Jacob Toppin, but it, like you're an all star week. Like this is supposed to be all star weekend where the best players are. And you're having to bring in like G leaguers yeah. to throw on. Nobody else wants the, to like the it. most yeah. iconic yeah. part of all star weekend being the dunk contest. Where Michael Jordan had the famous dunks oh, and yeah. Dominique Wilkins and all these guys, the way you're paying service to that is by Plus bringing in G leaguers, like, Jaime Hawkins Jr. and Jalen Brown out of nowhere yeah. to go do the dunk contest. So I would get rid of it. I think there's more things you could do um, on that competition, but it just sucks every year that we had to go through that. Yeah. Um, and something else that we go through every single year is the All Star Game being bad. But I'm okay with it. And I'll, with my greater narrative about the All Star Game is that you should kind of know what to expect at this point. It's not like more disappointing with a dunk contest. I'm always frustrated because um, like the expect they, they try to make it cool. They try to get, people yeah, in they, it. they really try to, pl- I think like they try to play up the dunk contest more than the all-star game. Cause the players tell you exactly what they're going to do in the all-star game. They tell you yeah. they don't care. Yeah. Which is like, again, can't necessarily blame them, which I mean, like obviously because like, you know, Oh, well, it's not like it used to be where you get all these old heads that are like, yeah, they used to take the all-star game seriously. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, but players also got paid like dog back then. So they had to literally had to earn the amount of money that they win in the all-star game because they weren't getting paid nearly as much as they are now. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, what's going to be more profitable for them? Because at the end of the day, it's a business. Yep. And I think the all-star game problem is a, collective narrative about the nba scheduling and the way players play these days so i think there's this idea that the hand check and the physicality of like the 80s basketball was like you'd get beat up a lot more in these games but they would still play hard in the all-star game that's just factually like incorrect um the hand check you might get more bruised like if i punch raj right now he's gonna have a (laughs) bruise but he's probably gonna be okay to play the next game but if raj went out and ran a marathon 
he would be in a lot worse shape tomorrow than if I punched him in his shoulder. Um, these players are playing a lot more intense cutting basketball. They're running a lot more cardio in these games. The game is played at a faster pace. That is a lot harder on their bodies than they got hand checked during a game or they got knocked to the floor or they got chicken winged with an elbow or something yeah. like that. So these players playing 82 games at a lot faster of a pace with a lot more athleticism involved. Mm -hmm. They don't want to play the all-star game because they are tired. Not that they're tired. I that they're like bruised and, and everything like mm -hmm. that. Like you want to say in the eighties is because their muscles are sore. Their yeah. like, aerobic system is shot because they are like doing all this traveling and all this yeah. running around. Like you got guys trying to chase Steph around the court every single night <laughs> yeah. around the screens. Like no one was doing that in the eighties. Um, so this, I, the, the idea that the league now is like, Oh, it's a finesse league. People don't get beat up like they used to No, They're more beat up because they have to do more of this like crazy running. That's why injuries are sky high because if you're not athletic enough to chase Steph around, you're going to pull a hamstring. Yeah. Um, if you're not in shape enough to guard Embiid, you're going to get hurt because he's going to, He's going to run through. He's going to run through you, or he's going to come off a screen at seven feet, and you're going to have someone like Jonas Valanciunas try to stick, stay foot with him. <laughs> yeah. Like that's just how the game is played these days. So um, that's the bigger narrative about the All Star Game. Uh, Anthony Edwards said it after the game. People don't want to play in the All Star Game. Yeah, like, he's like effectively, he's like, we, like they like think about this. Like they get it's called All Star Break, right? It's a mm -hmm. break in the schedule. Yeah. And they send these guys out to Indianapolis on Friday to have them do like media. And then on Saturday, the skills competition, Sunday, the game, and then games start back up on Thursday. Yeah. So they get like four days off after traveling to freaking Indianapolis, like of all places <laughs> too. like you could host this in like Miami and be like, okay, you know, they're going to go out God. party at night. They'll probably be a little hungover for the game or whatever, but it yeah. is what it is like. At least they'll have fun. Los Angeles, even if they did it in Vegas or whatever. No, Indianapolis. Like they're sitting in their hotel room all day, pissed off that they had to be there, and then go play the All Star game. Well, I will. I will say Indianapolis actually is a very underrated city. No, to I would. Host in. I would agree. Yes, it is very underrated, and I do. I do kind of enjoy. Not that. in February. Well, that's kind of the issue is the timing of it, because like it is. It's a very underrated city. It's like very good for hosting, but it's just like. It, because it's in the middle of the season, like people have to worry about the rest of the season. Like these guys, like they can't put like all of their effort in now because like they have to think about like the fact that they have what another 30 games left after yeah. this, like minimum. It's like, you're expecting these guys who are going 110% for like three months to then go 110% for something that does not matter. Mm -hmm. And then expect them to continue to put in that much effort afterwards. And they, their this expectation is piggyback on top of the NBA making the regular season more challenging by adding the in season tournament. Like they just yeah. asked people to play really competitive basketball in the in season tournament, which worked out great. And they were like, "By the way, by we the need way, to come back and we would like to see some effort in the All Star game." It's like, dude, like, come on. I I don't know how they're expecting this to like even work at this point. Like it just it because they keep adding so much. Like with the in season tournament, like with all these additional things by adding games, like it's you can only do so much. Yes, <laughs> like they need to like they need to calm down. They Taylor, do, and Taylor then, Swift in here, or then oh god, and then they're um because then they also set like the what the sixty five game minimum for MVP and yep. stuff like that. So it's like they're they want players to play more games at a higher level, and then they're expecting them to put in more effort in a game that doesn't matter. Like yeah. I like you can't have all of that at the same time. I, I love that point that they are raising the minimum number of games yeah. to be valid for the MVP award, but they are increasing the effort and intensity needed in a thing like the in-season tournament. And then everybody as a whole is kind of like this all-star game sucks. And it's yeah. like, well, something has to give. Yeah. Like, you if you want the regular everything. season to be more fun and you add the regular season, cool. But then you're still expecting your players to be there for all-star game. And then you're still making them play 82 games. So, like, what gives? Yeah. Like, someone like LeBron James has a bad ankle. He comes out to, um, he comes out on Friday to All Star Weekend before the game, pretty much because he just wants to get their last minute because he's trying to like recover. Yeah, as and get as ready can, for yeah. a postseason run at age 39 years old to get ready for this thing. And like, it's just. It doesn't, make it, sense. it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, of course, like the game, the East scored 211 points, the West 186. There were 168 threes taken in this game. Carl Anthony Towns had 50 points. Dame Lillard won the MVP award. And the problem is 
you used to be able to say at least a little bit like, oh, this was cool. Even like five, six years ago, you could be like, oh, the All-Star Game MVP kind of meant something. I remember when AD won the MVP award, I think, uh, after the year after Kobe passed. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of a big deal because you won the first Kobe Bryant uh, yeah. All-Star Game MVP award. And that, that was neat. But other than that, it just like they don't it doesn't mean anything like. I think it used to mean like Carl Anthony Town scored fifty points. You'd be like, oh, it's really cool. Like an All Star game, he scored fifty yeah, points. But then no one cares because everyone's just throwing shit up. Like you cross half court, why not take a shot? Well, also not to mention the fact that offense has gotten so good that like people score fifty points fairly often. I'd say oh, it wouldn't. In, it's not uncommon. It's not un. Yeah, it's not. That's the great way to put it. It's not now uncommon to see these ridiculous stat lines. So it's like when you look at the All Star game, it's kind of like lost its gimmick of like, oh yeah, they don't really play defense. Let's just see how many points they can score yeah. because you have people more like often than before scoring these ridiculous things while people are actually trying, which is nuts. Yeah, and like you can just see clips from the game. Carl Anthony, I think, got fifty points on a stupid like. He was at the end of the logo and was kind of just running away from the net and then just kind of like threw it and it yeah. went in. And it was, it was just like crap like that is just not entertaining to watch. Again, I don't blame the players at all. I blame the league for this. Uh, if I was a player, I wouldn't want to try in the All-Star game. you got a season to play. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about all these teams. We'll go into the standings in a little bit here. But if you're the Denver Nuggets and you came off a postseason run last year in the NBA Finals and you're Jokic, putting a lot of effort into the all-star game and you're trying no. to you have to get back to the postseason that's a lot yeah. for you and you're seven feet tall right you're steph curry you're getting a little bit older your team's not great but you're still in the playoff contention you're really gonna put a lot of energy into the all-star game the guys who might put energy into the game are your folks like tyrese maxi who are in their first all-star game yeah the team's kind of like sitting in the middle of the rankings but they didn't have a long postseason you've got a lot of energy and spry in your legs mm-hmm. um but a lot of these other guys like Giannis and like if you just go through the, the east like Dame, Giannis, Tatum, uh Embiid. Embiid, well he didn't play cuz he's injured. Oh, yeah. Um but like all these Bam Adebayo even like for the starters like they don't want to play intense <laughs> no. basketball. So if you're the league and you've made these great changes, I've really am happy with some of the changes they have made in the league with the in-season tournament. The in-season tournament was such a hit this year. Just listen to the play like I I don't even know the players are saying to cancel it like change all-star weekend i'm not saying you need to cut it out completely but you need to give your players more time and let them actually enjoy it Um, one one thing that i did see it might have been one of the nba players i forget who but they were saying just do one-on-ones like or like two-on-twos yeah and like king of the court like do like do fun stuff like that screw it do knockout i don't care yeah do do something knockout would be fun that would be hilarious Um, in the my problem with one-on-ones i don't know if players would be up for it just because you're going to be really put on an island there. Yeah, and true. Like, you could get really exposed there. You can get exposed, and that's you like... You hurt yourself. And people like, don't want to yeah, do that. Yeah. I don't think the hurting thing is that big of a deal for them, mm-hmm. but like, it's like, oh, I'm going to be put on an island with Kevin Durant. Like, let's see like how this you're goes. you're screwed, yeah. yeah. Um, but I heard Jason Timp say this. Uh, he works for the volume, and he was like, even if you take those 24 All-Stars, split them into uh, four teams of six, and then have them play 5v5 full court for first one to 20 points yeah you might get them to play hard for short bursts of energy yeah um in, in that type of context and i think that is a, that is a good point where if you kind of shorten the game split up the teams a little bit more and say hey you guys only have to play and so for so 20 points that's 10 baskets like yeah and then they might actually try and put a little effort in mm-hmm. but again i would just be okay cutting the all-star game and doing fun things like knockout and and things like that because we'll get into it the three-point contest is always fun. Everybody yeah. loves the three-point contest, and it's yeah. so basic. At court, at its court, it's so simple. Yeah, and you just got watch guys like shoot the, bo- the basketball. Yeah, and it's super fun. Um, Dame Lillard wins back to back for the first time yeah. ever, um, which is super cool. Um, it's just a fun, just a fun competition to watch. Like, also, Dame shot it from like fifty, like multiple times. It he's he was just out there just shooting. He, he didn't care. <laughs> Like, look, I think Curry's the greatest shooter of all time. But if you need someone to hit like a three quarters court shot, you're picking Dame. Dame Lillard is probably he's coming out of his prime a little bit now. But Dame is probably one of those guys who we're going to look back on history. And when we look at back NBA history, he is going to be lost because he was in the exact wrong time yeah. of being compared to Steph Curry. Yeah. Like this guy has been a sharpshooter for years. He's been shooting from far range i mean he hit the big buzzer beat against the rockets when he waved by to them game time or that was against okc the rockets was the first time yeah the first time had made yeah yeah and then the the rockets again like he has these moments but it's just lost because he's not better than steph yeah um so always love the three-point contest i think keeping it at its core of just 
skills. Like, I don't know if you could make a pat, like get your assist leaders and a yeah. passing challenge or just get your 24 all-stars and say, Hey, what competition would you rather do? A three competition. Like, even if you're not a good three point shooter, like screw it, screw it. And beat like, and Pete can go shoot a three point contest. Wouldn't it be funny that if you took the if you took like the bottom like five people in the three point percentage oh and then just shoved them out there? Yeah, like see who wins. Like I would say if you want to make your all star game about your all stars, take the twenty four all stars and put them through like skills challenges and award each one and one get the yeah, overall prize. So like crap, yeah. Put them in a passing challenge. Like you yeah. got these hoops around the court, like one's really far, you got like cross court heave it, uh, you got short passes, things like that. Um, you wanna know what sport does this already? Is it hockey? hockey? Yeah. Hockey does this. Wow. We're talking. <laughs> this is it's too much airtime for There's hockey. Too much airtime for oh, hockey. Oh, gosh. Uh, the ratings. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, but the, like those skills would be a lot more fun. And again, it's hard with the NBA because it's like shooting, passing. That's dribbling, about it. Like dribbling, maybe if you could figure out something. Yeah. But again, that's more fun than. Than just guys literally like walking up and down the court and just chucking up threes. Like, yeah. Um, I didn't even like, I think a lot of people said this this year, I knew the all-star game was on and I wasn't really doing anything. And I said, I'm no. not turning it on. Yeah. I watched Oppenheimer instead. Well, um, that's pretty bad. But the rising stars though, had a big change to the game. They ended up splitting them into four teams. They had like a shorter game and then mm-hmm. finals, semifinals. And I thought that's something that the all-star game should consider. Changing. That was a lot. That was more entertaining than the all-star game. Definitely. Yeah. Like, and, they, and they had a big upset where the G Leaguers kind of went through yeah. it. They did well, and that's cool. Like you yeah, a little give, bit story. Them, give them a shot to like go against the rookies because then then that's the whole thing is like, okay, well, you get the G Leaguers coming out there and they get to like, all right, we get to show these rookies, like, you know, yep. we might be in the G League, but we're still good. And then as like if you know, if you're a rookie out there, it's like, okay, like I get to sh- like show my stuff. Maybe I'm a little bit underrated. And I don't want to. Brandon Miller, to- you can score zero points. <sighs> oh boy. That's oh, that's rough. That's really bad. How do you score zero points? Like zero a- four. Jeez. It was a shortened game, but still, like Brandon Miller, we gotta be better. Come on, man. Aren't you? Oh no, I'm not making that joke. No. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Certified shooter. Okay. All right. There it is. <laughs> so I wanted to pull the bigger question up, and I talked about some changes, but like, what would you do as a whole if you were like the commissioner with All Star Weekend? I think you got to shift it more towards like the skill stuff, like like you were saying before. Like do a three point shooting, do a passing. Um, if you could find a way to do like best tr- like ball handles or something, like because you know like with the dunk contest is like okay you like you've kind of like it's almost run its course at this point. But I feel like you can't like if you really are trying to like show off like your like you know like let's say like how Kyrie has like the best handles like you've ever seen. Like you could do something with that. That's probably pretty similar to a dunk contest. I don't know like exactly how. Yeah, but even if like the new idea they come up with flops, at least you, you can tried. say they tried. Yeah, yeah. they tried. Because right now they're not trying. Yeah, it's just they're nobody's trying. The NBA isn't trying to make the All Star game better. And the players don't want to play in it, so they're not going to make it better. So, like, I don't know. I don't even know, like, what you would... Yeah, we're just at a loss. Yeah, like, something's... Like you were saying before, something's got to give. So, like, I would say lean into the skills. Lean into kind of their, like, gimmicky things where, like, you have competitions between players. Yep. Screw it. Bring out some more celebrities that used to play basketball Mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, just have fun. Yeah, I think they're just making it too much of a gimmick. Especially with the dunk contest where you get the props coming out and... Celebrity All Star Game and everything like take it take yourself a little bit more seriously and let the, the athletes have fun. And if the feedback from the athletes is they don't want the All Star Weekend, I'd really consider like saying, "Hey, we'll give you two weeks off in the middle of the season. We know it's going to suck for um for our ratings. ratings and whatnot, but like, but, but let's get carve out two weeks in the middle of the season. Let's reduce the game count to seventy two for the year. Let's get rid of back to backs. Let's give more time for All Star Break. Yes, you're going to have stuff to do during All Star Break, and then afterwards." We're going to give you another week off to rest and recover. Mm-hmm. Then you might actually have athletes come out and actually want to care a little bit. Yeah. Not maybe for the all-star game, but for skills competitions or just being present. Yeah. And enjoying the time off and, afterwards. And also I'd say giving them a break in the middle and then having the all-star whatever at the end, I think is going to be 
better, I feel like, yeah. because like you don't have players worried about playoffs and whatever. And then it, it would make it just a lot more fun because then it's like, okay, well, we literally have nothing to lose at this point. Like, I'm just here to have fun. And then you just try to make it fun. It's like what the NFL has been doing recently, where they kind of have turned the Pro Bowl literally into like more of just like a celebration of the players. Yes. And like, and like the players themselves are having fun. Yeah, because like, they, they, they stopped playing football. They played flag football. Exactly. Yeah. And like that's the point is like this is a Pro Bowl. This is supposed to be a celebration of the NFL. Fine. We don't have like it's it's not worth it to really try to play this like like the actual sport itself, but we can still have a celebration of the sport where it's like they have this competition about like showing off how skilled these athletes are in their respective positions and just let them have fun. It's fun watching these superstar athletes who are getting, you know, paid obviously millions of dollars and have these incredible lives but like you see you were you remember that it's a game yep like you remember that's like oh yeah this is a, this is a child's game to have fun yeah like that's the it's, point it's what i said about football like i think seeing the athletes just do regular things yeah or common skills is fun to do i think the nfl would benefit so much if they held like a track meet in yeah, like a lineman year. track meet. Would, yep. Dude, that would be the most fun thing ever. Like they just held a track meet for all the players and you could yeah. see the linemen run a four by one. Like, okay, we're going to get the four Indianapolis Colts offensive linemen, yeah. four of the uh, yeah. Eagles linemen. They're going to do a relay race on the track. Like AFC versus NFC, whoever the Pro Bowl linemen are. Yep. You just do whatever. And I think the athletes would find it really funny and fun. Yeah. Especially you could have a legit competition where you put Tyree Kill and DK Metcalf and these guys who think they're fast and like yeah. get the gun up in the air and fire yeah. it. And DK's but- going to fight someone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, that's the football talk and you wouldn't really do that in the NBA, but the similar idea where can you get these players doing skills that against each other for competition that we can all watch and say, Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and whatnot. So I think just make it fun. Just make, make it, it fun. fun for the players because if the players are having fun, you can at least hang your hat on that because like, okay, the ratings are going to blow either way. So at least somebody's having fun. <laughs> like, and also they put it in a bad time because I know it's after the, uh, NFL season, but they only got 30 games left. Like, yeah, this isn't halfway through the season. This is really far during the season. So these players are really tired at this point through the, the grind of the NBA season. And then they're like, please fly out to Indianapolis for please us. Please fly out to Indianapolis and play a game you don't want to play. In. Yep. None of them are playing defense. No. No, dude. Take 211 points. 211. That's insane. Welcome and, to the modern and NBA. I was yeah. thinking about this on the walk over here to record. It's not 211 of wow, that was a really tough shot making, you know, that was just like, you see the Indian, uh, the Pacers a lot. They score really high point <laughs> scores during the game, but usually like legit defense is being played on both sides. It's just not like great defense, but they're playing with they're effort. Just walk so, up and shut so, up shots. so there is some form of in the regular season games when there's 140 points scored, there's some form of resistance and there's good tough shot making mm-hmm. and people have to get creative with their shots or three points going down here. There's just no defense. So yeah. it's 211 points of easy buckets yeah and that's what sucks because it's like not fun to watch it's like yeah nba players can hit shots who would have guessed yep like they two minutes into the second they're both teams 51 60 oh my god it's it's insane and again it's really cool to see players like just make really hard shots like it's nothing yeah but it's fun for a quarter not for 48 minutes of basketball exactly like it's just too long like yeah it's did they get rid of the little Kobe rule thing they would yeah they did in? yeah oh, that was actually interesting yeah, yeah it was interesting for a little bit then it ran its course because yeah. after teams would be up by like the, the east was winning this game by big so when they do elam ending 21 it's like well we're 40 points back and this other team's 20 points back we're not playing hard we're not yeah. gonna catch up yeah um but yeah any yeah. other thoughts on all-star weekend for the nba they gotta figure it out <sighs> they do Please, for love of god hmm well, moving on, we haven't talked about NBA much because of the of football. So we wanted to go over kind of the standings, our reactions, what we're kind of looking for yes. for the rest of the season. So you look at the standings right now, I'll just kind of read off the top. In the Western Conference, we have Minnesota, um, number one, Oklahoma City, Clippers, Nuggets, Suns, Pelicans, Mavericks, Kings, Lakers, Warriors. That's kind of your top 10. Um, two and a half out from the Warriors of the Jazz, and they're out of the play-in game. Um, the big note in the Western Conference is the, the hunt for the one seed is going to be super fun. The Timberwolves are up by one and a half games on the Thunder, who are up by half a game on the Clippers, and then the Nuggets are only three games back of the Timberwolves as a whole. So we're in a really fun hunt. It's a bloodbath. <laughs> and what's interesting is the Nuggets are in that four seed right now, and I think they will climb up, but you don't want to run into the Nuggets 
Like if you're the Timberwolves and you're the one seed right now and you slip up a you little bit, better not. If you around. go from one to four and the Nuggets go from four to one, you've just bought yourself a first round matchup. Even with the setup right now, like Minnesota yeah. one, Nuggets four, yeah. you bought yourself a second round matchup with the reigning NBA champions. Like yeah. You don't want that. Like you want to see Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray in the playoffs? No, no, you don't. Nuh-uh. And if you're like a team like the Thunder, like teams like the Lakers are sitting in the nine seed they're right now, like nice and pretty. They're sitting like, hey, if we get the seven seed we can beat the thunder in the first round and upset them as a seven seed like you start to bring this thought of the young teams like being that second seed yeah. here where the oklahoma city are maybe playing a little bit above their heads right now like do they do they get in their own head like get in their own way kind of thing because you have the vets that are sitting at the bottom just waiting yep and that, i think it's like fascinating how the standings will shake up and even right now like the suns are the five seed and they're tied with the pelicans so they could flop around but Nugget Suns first round right now. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at it would be this would be crack cocaine. Yeah. yeah. We have Denver Nuggets. Phoenix would be the, the first round matchup. Yeah. We have Clippers versus Pelicans, which just be fun. Yeah. We have like Oklahoma versus Mavericks if that holds, and then like if just say the Lakers come up and play Minnesota, like it would be crack in the first round. Yeah, that would be um, so cool. It's so jumbled up, and you're gonna have this whole storyline of like the Warriors and the Lakers are the nine and ten seats right now. They would be playing each other for an elimination. Like the Lakers Yet and the Warriors again. would be playing an elimination game. Yep. Winner goes on to the next round of the play, and the loser is out entirely. Yeah, like that would be so. Uh, it would be that, so. That would be so good. So good. So the Western Conference is super exciting. Um, of course, at the bottom we've got bottom feeders like Portland and San Antonio who are just trying to get out of. But like, Wemby's good. <laughs> Wemby's good, but their team's real bad. Um, <laughs> it doesn't also help that like the top of the West is like if you're San Antonio, you have no players that are good enough to beat Minnesota, Oklahoma, Clippers, Nuggets, Suns, Pelicans, yeah, like, Mavs, Kings, Lakers, War. Like your just personnel is just not good enough. Because like yeah, you got Wemby. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. literally it. There's nobody there's else. No, they're like they're now, po- I know basketball well. There's no one else on that team. That, their point guard literally doesn't throw Wemby the ball. <laughs> Like, yep. why? Wemby is a point guard, center, shooting guard, power forward, strong forward, every possession. Yeah, he also has to play defense on offense to steal the ball from his own teammates yeah, to, right. to score. Yeah, they're 11 44. They're oh four, four and a half games back of Portland, who's the 14th seed in the West. Jesus Christ. So they're in full tank mode. Um, what like what is from the Western Conference kind of stands out to you as like what you're looking forward to for the second half of the season? I mean, I'm really surprised that the like the Timberwolves are one. Yeah, like that's really surprising. Cat, because like Cat, um, and yeah, Cat Nan, like they're both like they're a really really good yeah. duo. But like, I don't like haven't they done anything recently? So like, the se- sneaky narrative I love about the Timberwolves being one is this was hailed as the worst trade of all time when they traded for Gobert. Yeah. last year, like when they. Mm-hmm fizzled out last year everyone was like holy crap they gave this huge overpay for rudy gobert and they suck and now this year they're leading a competitive western conference yeah they're, again they're only one and a half games up but they're like they're solidly a top four team right now they'll probably finish as the top four team in the west and they've done this whole entire flip their defense is suffocating they've really figured out this yeah. twin towers type of lineup um they might go down in the playoffs hey. but um jesus <laughs> christ but They've got a great number. They've got a great option, and and, and then they got Cat, and then Gobert playing that front line. Like it's just a really exciting team to be the number one seed right now. And you're gonna, of course, bring up the narrative of like, well, the Timberwolves, they have to play the Mavericks in the first round. They have to play the Lakers in the first round. Can they beat them? Yeah, and you're gonna start having this argument about. Yeah, they played great in the regular season, but will they beat the veteran savvy teams that are coming in at seven eight seed? Yeah, I mean, oh god. In a hypothetical world, the Lakers could be the eight seed, the Warriors could be the seven seed, and you would have a matchup of the Timberwolves versus the Lakers and the Thunder versus the Warriors. And there would be genuine conversations about both the Lakers and the Warriors upsetting those games, upsetting those series. Dude, I don't know if the Warriors are doing it. I, I don't think so uh, either, but there would be conversations because. The, okay. So, like, you, yeah, you would, you would have to have the conversation just because, like, genuinely, like, you have the veteran teams versus, like, the really young teams. So it's like, the, like yeah. With the young teams, it's like, yeah, they could play out of their minds or they could complete the bet. Yeah, and like I mean the Timberwolves are not a like a super young team, but they've they're completely irrelevant. They've never done anything before. Cat always fizzles out in the playoffs. He even notoriously had the game where he fouled out yeah. um in the play in game and just fizzled out that way. So that's super exciting. My narrative is the Suns who have been injured 
all I'm a Suns homer too, so this is like bias. But yeah, your second the, team is the yeah, Suns. <laughs> but the Suns who were injured all during the start of the year were completely out of it, are now only six games out of the one seed, and I don't think they get the one seed, but slowly but surely coming up in the rankings and they're going to be a really big threat for some of these teams yeah. in the playoffs. I mean, like Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and uh, Kevin, Kevin Durant, Durant couldn't even get on the court together mm-hmm. for a large majority of the season. They signed for they signed Royce and Neal at the deadline. That was a huge addition. I think you look at the Suns there as a five seed, um, three games out of the Nuggets. Is when things go their way, some injuries happen, they start getting into the four, three, get a first round series game. Nobody wants to see the Phoenix Suns in the first round of the playoffs. No, not be at all. Absolute disaster. Yeah. But yeah. then, of course, like you got to watch out for the Lakers too. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, kind of sitting in that nine seed, but they start winning basketball games. It's okay. The Chris Paul curse is still very well and alive. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you if he was on the team, they're still cursed. That's oh, all God. you care about the Chris Paul curse. Yeah. Chris Paul will never get a ring. <laughs> what team is he on? The Warriors. Warriors. Now. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh crap! Where did the West? Did I delete the West Eastern, the Eastern Conference? Conference? Well, Raj has them up if you need. Yeah. Standings up. Yeah. All right, run us through, run us through those standings, Raj. Cool. So we have the Celtics at one, <laughs> the Cavs at two, the Bucks at three, and they're on a two game losing streak right now. Surprised it's not eight, but Knicks at four. Well, they're six, three and seven in their last ten. That's fair. <laughs> Sixers at five, uh, Pacers at six, Heat at seven, Magic at eight, Bulls at nine, Hawks at ten, Nets at eleven, Raptors at twelve, Hornets at thirteen. Wizards at 14, and everyone's favorite team out of Detroit, the Pistons. No, so, they, they broke the... No, they. I thought they were going to break the record. Yeah. So this is what I was going to talk about. The Detroit Pistons got... Like, this is this is actually the biggest story in the East. The Detroit Pistons, who were so bad to start the year, being memed left and right, longest losing streak of NBA history, are one game worse than the Wizards. Like, they're not even that... like. There's a team in the East that is comparably as bad as them. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you have uh, what Kyle Kuzma and um, Jordan Poole as your one and two. Yeah, that's like if, if the Detroit Pistons and Washington Wizards play, and the Detroit Pistons won, they would then the Wizards would then be the worst team in the league. Yeah. And the, after and, all of that, after all this, it's like they're so like the Wizards are so bad, and people have like not like recognized I that because like- the Detroit Pistons have gotten on for the entire season. I, I genuinely feel like that's so much. worse. Worse, though because you're not even bad to the point where it's funny you're just bad and no one cares yep like what like when has of course i'm gonna say this and then all the nba fans are gonna start screaming at me has washington ever been relevant no no like ever gilbert arenas is the last time they were re- oh maybe michael jordan <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like maybe no. John Wall was on that team at some point. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Wall, they never like, were going yeah, anywhere yeah. with LeBron in the concert. Like John Wall and Bradley Beal is a facade for a yeah. sorry organization. Yeah. So like, it, it, like they're just they're so bad. Like they're not like you know you get like the the zero and sixteen Browns, the zero and sixteen Lions. Everybody memes on those teams. No one forgets the the twos that year. No, the teams that you're, like you're that won right. like two games that year or three. No one no one remembers them. And that's just like what Washington has felt like forever. Like they're just bad. Yep. Like it just no one cares. Oh, Chronic, the, chronically bad. Beat them. Yeah. What? Oh, the Bucks well, beat. I'm, I'm glad the, the Pistons. Bucks beat the Pistons. Yeah, that's oh, a shock. The Pistons did beat the Wizards. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like, that's why the Pistons, if they played again against the Wizards, they would then have the tiebreaker. Yeah. And the Wizards would be the worst team in the league. And no After, one would care. And no one cares because the Pistons have just been so bad all season. And people have not. I don't think people are recognizing enough about how bad this was for the Wizards. Because reminder, they have Jordan Poole now. Like this was the Chris Paul trade. Like. They have nobody on that roster. This is not a like the Pistons. If you get an early draft pick, you actually feel pretty good. You got Cade, you got some guys there where you feel yeah. like maybe next year we'll figure it out. We fired our coach, like we'll get it, we'll get it together. The Wizards have nobody. They're gonna be like terrible for like nine, ten years. Yeah. There's, uh, they're never gonna get out. Kuzma of the said Kuzma had like a trade off or somewhere, and he said, "No, nah, I want to stay in Washington and build something here." Yeah. Okay, bud. Dude. Dude, oh they like God. like I don't know if I've seen a team that has like a less a less positive future than the Wizards. Like send them, ever, send them to Pittsburgh. <laughs> send them to Pittsburgh. Because <laughs> some years ago, I would have said like maybe some of these guys would have been good, but they've they've grown up enough that like you know they're not going to be good. So like <laughs> we're going to go into some really good lore here about the Washington Wizards. Um, Marvin Bagley the third, he was great when he came out of college, but he's no longer like there's no hope for him anymore. Um, Cody Kisper, who came out of Gonzaga, he's a really good shooter, number 15 pick, but he's cool, but he's not like going to lead your team as a one or two option. Maybe probably not even a third option on a championship team. 
Rashawn Holmes and Landry Shamit, Sixers legends, love those boys. They're not getting anything done there. <laughs> um, Jordan Poole, who maybe people thought would like Jordan Poole is having an all time terrible season. Yeah. So this this guy who you kind of traded for, like maybe okay, maybe like some of the ideas with the Pistons were, I mean, Wizards were like they're gonna suck this year. Yeah. But Jordan Poole. 30 points on 30% shooting every night. No, that's simply not the case. Jordan Poole's just been bad. Yep. Um, he's, he's averaging 15 <laughs> points, two rebounds, three assists. Two. And I don't even know what his season long shooting average is. Cause I can't look on the, like the, the short screen here, but it's not good. Whatever it is. I um, just remember when they gave him and Kuzma a graphic and they're like, dude, the new duo, the new in, duo Washington. in Washington. Oh my the, the God. People beat the Kyle Lowry, Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid graphic. Oh yeah. I forgot Lowry said the, the Sixers. <laughs> well, then Pat Bev decided to say, yeah, I'm going to see that ass when I here's get what, there. Here's what Poole's doing. He's averaging, again, he's the number one option on a terrible team. He's averaging 15, six, we'll round up for him. 16 points. Um, 16 points on... 30% from three, 40% from the field. That is horrible. That is dreadful. And again, he's a number one option on a terrible team, which you could say could work in Les's favor, but I can promise you no one's throwing doubles at Jordan Poole. No, not, no, not, not, not a prime LeBron dude. where you're like, oh, he had a down season at 25 points. He was tripled every play. Yeah. Or Travis Kelsey, you get bracketed on every play. Yeah, you only have 900 so good. yards. Like this is, no one's doubling Jordan Poole. Yeah. Um, back to my Wizards lure here. Then you've got, Oh no, I've lost the roster here. <sighs> it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> they got Johnny Davis, who I could have told I could have told you to not draft him when he was drafted a few years ago. I'm not gonna lie, you would start saying these names. I, I would believe you. You who? would say anything right now. Johnny Davis had no like relevant to me like potential when he was drafted number ten. Like he was just gonna be okay at best. This, the, but like all those names, Denny Adia, Denny Avita, who was drafted in 2020, I thought he was really cool. But he's been in the league now for four years. Like you know what he is? He's not good. So they've got these like this bum roster. I'm gonna call them bums. Like that's what they are. Yeah. <laughs> they're um, bona fide scrubs. They're bona fide scrubs. <laughs> like they, they better get the G League boys in here. Like get <laughs> Kenneth Lofton in there, Mac McClung. I don't know. Yeah, do Kenneth something. Like this is like this is dreadful. And like they just like I don't even like know what they could do to make the team better because like. Who's going to be like, yeah, I'm going to sign in free agency to the Washington Wizards. They're going to sign a guy like Tobias Harris, give him $30 million so they can win two more games next year. <laughs> like, that's the type of team they are right now. It's so bad. Like, at least with the Pistons, they could go down and be like, Christ. hey, this player's got potential. Hey, you make a little tweak here and there. Get a vet in their locker room. It could could be better. No, not with the Washington Wizards. They're, They're screwed. I'm predicting a 10-year like drought where people are like, sell the team bad. Sell the like, team. they might get relocated to Vegas. Like, they might not even expand the league they, send them to the berg they might not <laughs> expand the league they might say washington ha you have to give up your basketball yeah, yeah. Team. <laughs> pittsburgh wizards the pittsburgh wizards dude that would be better than what they have now <laughs> like i could play better than these boys like okay. me, take me off the streets like, oh boy here we go <laughs> at least i won't be shooting 40 percent. I, shoot, <laughs> I won't be shooting at all but at least it's not 40 percent well um, you'll be shooting like three percent but you'll shoot like 50 shots a game yeah <laughs> Won't shoot at all. He's gonna put some shots up after the game, you know, after you took a thirty point loss to like the Wizards. Yeah. Wizards. The to Wizards. the Wizards. And the worst part is there there's some bad teams in the league, but at least with the Spurs, like you kind of get it, like they're not that good. They're just young. They're rebuilding. If you're the Pistons or the Wizards, every post game you gotta go up. Some some beat reporters like, Hey, Jordan, like why did you lose today? Like what was going what did you see out there? Like, we like, what suck. Do you, like, I would like I would just as a pro athlete, I'd be like, I'm gonna be honest, Tim, our team blows. Like, <laughs> like, we're we're not good. Like, like I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. We played the Bucks tonight. Giannis Antetokounmpo's on the other side. Our best player is myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not the, blocking I'm like the 60th best player in the league, and Giannis is the best player in the league. Like, we didn't stand a chance. Like, what did you want me to do? Like, you, I wouldn't even know what you say at the mic. When the Pistons were in that losing streak, I was like, what do you say after the game? Like, yeah, yeah, we suck. That's what Kate Cunningham said once. Yeah, you're Everyone, just, yeah we suck. He's like, we're, we're terrible. We're not good at the, we're not good at the <laughs> yeah. sport. Like, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Um, Jesus anyway, back to the East Conference standings. Uh, what stands out to me most is the, the Celtics have been running away with this conference. Seven games lead right now. Six game, yeah, yeah six game lead right now. Six, Best yeah. overall record in the league. They're twenty six and three at home. Um, so they practically don't lose at home, mm. and they have the third easiest schedule for Remaining, the rest yeah. for the rest for the rest of the league. So that means they're going to be able to rest their guys a little bit on back to backs, like kind of take it but, easy. Um, you know who I see at, at the seven seed? Who do you see at the seven seed? Jimmy Butler in the Heat. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> Well, hasn't he, hasn't he been injured the entire yeah, time? Yeah, Jimmy. That's okay. He's Just been injured wait for the bit. playoffs to come. Yeah, I guess he's going to turn on his Super Saiyan mode. The Celtics kryptonite is Jimmy Butler. It's Jimmy. Well, so our group chat talked about this one day. 
the, some of the matchups we have potentially brewing in the East are all time first round yeah. matchups. So there is a very plausible world right now if the season was to end today where you get the Knicks and Sixers in the first round yeah. the Bucks Pacers who everyone forgets about game ball gate and some of these early season games. oh I forgot about yeah. that like that's a really like intense they played in the in-season tournament and the Pacers got them there so like this is like a matchup that has like yeah they got a little bit of beef has something to it and they could match up in the first round then you got the Celtics at one and the Heat are at seven right now if this, they're tied with the magic yeah it? yeah they yeah. they are the Heat just come down a seed we got Celtics and versus Celtics heat. versus Heat in the first round, a matchup similar to last year. You have the Cavs and not the Cavs, the Pacers and the Bucks, the Knicks and the Sixers. The only bad se- series would be like Cavs. the Magic and the Cavs. But you sacrifice one yeah. one season here, one uh, game here. So somehow, some way, I feel like the Magic will win that series. Orlando I don't know Magic, <laughs> Orlando Magic. Um, the Orlando Magic are everything that the washington wizards aren't yeah um at least they're fun yeah yeah least, yeah exactly orlando Ma- oh, I bad mean, stuck in my we head need a, we need to clip that one like the orlando magic like brazil account dude <laughs> that account is on you mean the, timber, you mean the, timber or the timberwolves yeah, yeah. The timberwolves. when they posted that one they have, con- they have calmed down a little bit yeah, yeah a little bit thank christ it didn't take much yeah yeah that was crazy that was nuts yeah um but i think the eastern conference is going to be exciting as yeah. Knicks and sixers are kind of tied up in the standings right now. What um, are the play-in seeds? So, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like right now you have a situation where like the the Pacers are kind of sliding out a little bit. Like you might get some of these Knicks Sixers kind of sliding into the play-in games. We'll see how long with these injuries. Um, the Nets. But that's oh. exciting. Uh, the Nets. Nets. Listen, Ben Simmons. He's he's not back, guys. No, Ben Simmons is the opposite of back. I hope we have a clip of you saying. That you're putting money down on. Ben I did. Come back player of the year. You yeah. can go clip it. Go yeah. find it. Come back player of the year. Yep. Um, I told you you were donating your money. There. <laughs> I told you I was donating my money. <laughs> I would have made like seven hundred dollars yeah, on the five dollar yeah, bet. Fair. I knew I was losing my money, but I love Ben Simmons so much, <laughs> dude. It's a Ben Simmons cycle. It's put some shots up in the off season. Looks good. Hurts his back again. <laughs> comes back after PT. Sits has, out. <laughs> has one decent game, and then trash. Sits out. Injured. Fortnite streamer. Fortnite. I know he like I know that a nerve impingement is painful, but like when I start hearing these words used to describe his injuries that I've never heard basketball players like, use before, I'm just like, gosh, we've like not like I feel bad for him that he's had these injuries, but I'm just like, you're gone. Like you're just done. Guys, he's, you don't get it. He's got a hematoma on his back. <laughs> <laughs> um they talked one time about like a narrowing space in his spine and pressing on his nerve. I was like, okay, we're doing too much here. Like yeah. you're you're cooked. Like we're we're grasping at straws here. Yeah, like Lonzo's cooked too. Yeah. Yeah, but Lonzo at least like his, he actually is like legit. He's hurt. he's got yeah. cartilage like yeah. missing out of his knee. Like, yeah. And I, I believe Ben Simmons' injuries are real. It's just like the back injuries have taken him out of all any form of like becoming a good player, and then his psyche's all off, and he's just yeah. not going to be a good player anymore. Um, anymore, bro. He hasn't been yeah. in like five years. I know. <laughs> it's the pumpkins I, aren't bad. Let me cook. <laughs> let me cook. Okay, we're going to talk about the Bucks, but we can't talk about the Bucks without talking about Doc Rivers. You mean the greatest coach in the, the NBA? The greatest future, coach of all time. Hall of Famer. Yep, absolutely, Doc Rivers. Um, okay, is he, wait time out before I even like we st- even start talking about this. Is he a Hall of Famer or no? No. no. Okay, no. I d- I don't know enough about basketball to know. All, I have only seen the memes. Yeah. So w- that's why I'm confused why teams keep picking him up because he's bad. He then, was the coach for what was the first team he was on? The 2008 the Celtics. Yeah, and then after that he was on that team with his son, right? Well, well, Austin Rivers, Rivers was on the Clippers, yeah, yeah during the Chris the Paul, Blake Griffin, yeah. Lobster. He traded his son, right? Yeah, yeah, that was funny. Um, <laughs> and then he goes to Sixers Philly, right yeah. up, yeah, and then he trades his uh, son-in-law. Yeah, yeah. Um, when the, I don't think we talked about it on the podcast when this trade happened. Well, not the trade when they fired Adrian Griffin. I was like, okay, it makes sense. Like they weren't playing up to their standard, but when they hired Doc Rivers, I was just like, what the fuck yeah, are you doing? Essentially, I was like, what in what scenario? Does this make sense? Because Doc Rivers has not been a good coach. He's proceeded over like meltdowns. Again, Sixers, people forget, up 3-2 on the Celtics in the playoffs last year. Going If they win the series, they're going to go play the Miami Heat who are playing way over their head, right? They lose the series because James Harden flames out. Doc Rivers doesn't make changes. <laughs> they lose a close game in game six. It wasn't like they got blown out. Like they, they, yeah. They lost themselves that series where they could have gotten to the Eastern Conference Finals, finally got out of the second round, and then played a Heat team that they probably could have beaten and gone and oh, played yeah. the Nuggets in the Finals. And then Embiid-Jokic Finals would have been lit. Yeah. But So they, they lose that series. 
They were bad the year before. James Harden requests a trade out of Philly. I mean, your yeah. one job is to keep your star players at least happy and together. James Harden wants out of town. He gets traded. Um, Doc Rivers obviously gets fired. Now he's sitting on the bench with Mike Breen and Doris Burke for these games, <laughs> just enjoying life. And I was like, you know, Doc, you probably seem happy, like less stressed out, like yeah. you're good on the call, like stay there. And then he's like, he's doing this, some kind of advising for the Bucks in, in the meantime and anything. The, why they would hire this guy to be their head coach is beyond me. And it's just gotten worse and worse. So, of course, we're recording this after J.J. Redick laid into Doc Rivers. Yeah. But I wanted to talk about it beforehand anyway. Like, he's exactly right. Doc Rivers doesn't hold anybody accountable. He has just put excuse and excuse and excuse about why this team isn't succeeding this year. And it's ridiculous. The Milwaukee Bucks have one of the best players of the entire generation of NBA history in Giannis Antetokounmpo. They have Dame Lillard, who is not playing well. But he is a great player as well. They have a team that has made has won the finals and the structure is still yeah. there and they've made some changes. They have Chris Middleton, who's a really good third option. They have all these guys. I know you think he's ugly, but he's yeah, a good third option. I never <laughs> said he was bad at basketball. He's just ugly. <laughs> um, but they've got all these players. Like, figure it out. Like I you, know. Dude. I know you came into the, the coaching midseason. I know that's not easy. Like, but you figure it out. Like, like at a certain point, like yeah, I get it. You're picking up the team midseason, whatever. But like, th- there's a reason why they're what the three seed right now. Mm-hmm. Like, they're a good basketball team. They got worse when they added Doc Rivers. Yeah, worse. Yeah. The whole idea was that Adrian Griffin wasn't getting the job done. He wasn't perceived well in the locker room, and your team has gone worse. You were three and seven in your last ten games in an Eastern Conference right now. Who the Knicks? Everyone's injured on the Knicks. Yeah. They are OJ. Joe OJ's out. Mitchell yeah. Robinson's out. Literally everybody has heard of that yep. team. And the fact that the Knicks have a shot at passing the Bucks. Yeah. They're with, a game with, and a half back with nobody. The Sixers, Joel Embiid's been out for three, two weeks. Yeah. He's not even eligible to hit a 65 game cap anymore for the season. Yeah. He's had a knee surgery. There are two games out. The Pacers are four games out when they had a complete skid after the midseason tournament. And the Pacers don't have anywhere near the talent necessary to compete with the Bucks, especially before the Siakam acqu- acquisition. You're right now been passed by the Cleveland Cavaliers who are counted, 15, I think 15 and 17 or whatever against teams with winning records and yeah. 23 and one against or whatever ridiculous they're, status. They're, they're bad team merchants. Yes. It sounds like the Dolphins. <laughs> oh my God. And they're lucky they play in the Eastern Conference for that reason because there's a lot of bad teams in yeah. the East, but the Cavs are like feasting off of just beating bad teams and the Bucks are letting them pass them because they can't figure it out. And it's it's killer because as soon as Doc got to town for the Bucks, offense plummets. Like yeah. Why why is that the case? Like it makes no sense. He's been blaming the schedule. He said the players got to show up a little bit more. Like no, you have to be a good coach. Mm-hmm. Like you're. He's acting like he's the victim. He's like he won an NBA championship, got the benefit of the doubt everywhere he went because he left the Clippers, got a job for the Sixers, left that job, got on ESPN. Like no one feels sorry for you, Doc. Like you've. <laughs> You've done every He's also made bank. Let's be yeah. very clear. You've made a ton of money. You've gotten every opportunity to see. You've had great basketball players like yeah. Chris Paul, uh, Blake Griffin on your team, Joel Embiid, yeah. Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and James Gotcha. Harden. Harden. James yeah. Harden and I'm forgetting one other player on Tyrese there. Maxey. Or like you've got you've had a great <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well stretch there. Um Pat Bev. Okay. Yeah. And then now you have Giannis Antetokounmpo on your and team. Damian and Damian Lillard. And Dame yeah. on your team. And I'm supposed to be feel sorry for you. Like, oh well, it's hard to be a coach. You know, who yeah, I, no. you know who I feel sorry for? Jacques Vaughn, who had Kevin Durant, yeah. Kyrie Irving, and James Harden on his team and just got fired because all those guys left and now he's yeah. left with a bad roster. Like That's who I feel sorry for. I don't feel yeah. sorry for Doc Rivers, yeah. who, by the way, it wasn't like he got forced into stuff. He took the Bucks job. It's not like yeah. they were like, well, Doc, you in, your have con- to sign. in your contract that stipulated yeah. with ESPN, it stipulated that if a head coaching job came open, you would take it. Yeah. Like, he didn't have to take this job and now he's complaining about it. Yeah. It's like, oh, sorry. Yeah, like, I'm so- like I don't know. Like, JJ Redick deserved to lay into him, and people are like, oh, JJ Redick, like, was made relevant from uh, Doc Rivers. Like, even if you want to make the cap. argument, like, cool, but like Doc, like he deserves to be called out because he's just always putting his players on blast and saying how hard it is for them in the middle of the year, and they might, they might pull it together because they have the best player on the planet, but it's not going to be because of Doc Rivers. And I guarantee you, there's going to be a moment in the playoffs. Maybe it'll cost them the series. Maybe it won't. Where Doc Rivers does something that everybody's like huh yeah and they're gonna lose this they're gonna lose the game lose the series make it harder on themselves mm-hmm. and we're gonna be like why did they hire this guy and yeah. they're gonna fire him in the offseason and they're gonna have to go get a new coach again next year and they're gonna go through this entire process while damian lillard's, lillard's getting older it's gonna be sick when Giannis goes to the knicks <laughs> 
He might because I don't know if you want to hang around with this team anymore because they haven't got the head coach right. They fired uh, Budenholzer, who was okay. Mm -hmm. They got Adrian Griffin in place, kind of from the same system. They fired him, shortest head coaching reign of all time. And then they're going to, Doc Rivers might be Adrian Griffin for the shortest coaching reign of all time. Yeah. Because he's going to get fired at the end of the season. Yeah. And he would only That's crazy to think about. The Bucs are going to have the two shortest head coaches of all time. With one of the best players of all time. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's a disgrace to do for Giannis to have that like on his team. Um, it's insanity. Anyone else want to rip into Doc Rivers? Uh, thank you for ruining the hopes and dreams of Sixers fans last season. <laughs> uh, I hate you. Thank God you're out of Philly. Um, I wish you stayed in Philly. I really do. No, just because I wanted them to actually, suffer no, for I'm so long. I'm glad you're on the Bucks now. Thank you. There we go. But now we, now we got it. Now we got it. Would make me happier. Than a buck Sixers like and the round Sixers matchup. knock out the Bucks and, and they we just get like out the second round <laughs> and it's because like Tyrese Maxey was allowed to like cook and because remind you Doc Rivers had put uh, Tyrese on the bench for the first year as a rookie Damn, he was yeah. really good and I kind of supported it at the time I understand the development aspect of it but like he was really good obviously and I would just love to see like Joel Embiid just like all over the Bucks in the playoffs <laughs> oh and then watch Doc Rivers have to watch like he. He did such a bad job at coaching the that team. team that he built. He's, yeah, he's going to watch a Nick Nurse led good Sixers team kick the Bucks' ass in the playoffs, and then he's going to be like, "Oh, I had that guy. Oh. I had that roster." Damn, they had a better player on there too. That roster is not much different than it was when he was there, and it's arguably worse. Yeah, you could argue with star power; it's worse. And I think that there's a legit game. shot they could easily beat yeah. the Bucks. We have Kyle Lowry now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. BBL Lowry. Yeah. I'm excited. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. I'm excited to see him on court every night. <laughs> yeah. Him uh, and Kelly Oubre. Oh, woo! oh woo! we're spoiled. So, fire me up, baby. <laughs> Neither of you two stand up. <laughs> um. Anyway, <laughs> that's Doc Rivers. Um. Transitioning. Hard transition to football here. All right. Um, a hard left turn. One of my favorite seasons right now is like basketball is really good. I love basketball, as you can probably tell. I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I also love mock drafts. And I, <laughs> there it is. And I love making predictions. <laughs> there for it football. is. And so first, like first mock drafts are coming out right now. And of course, the big topic of discussion is whether or not the Bears are going to take Caleb Williams with that first pick. And if they do take Caleb Williams, what's subsequently going to happen? So I wanted us to like sit here i know we're a little bit farther from the draft and just talk about like the pros the cons the yes the no's the commander's obviously in an interesting position at number two because they signed cliff kingsbury as their offensive coordinator clearly trying to bait um a trade or like a trade or they're trying to get caleb to like pull an eli manning and just refuse to go there yeah so let's talk about it bears number one pick who do they take? I, who do they take? What it was your thought process? Who do behind they this? take, or who should they take? Say say both. Like just thoughts. Okay, so they should take Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm-hmm. and build because, for the love of God, you have a decent enough quarterback that you're probably because, like, what when by the time that he ends up being good, you'll have already given him a new contract, and you have him at that lower value. Because and then if he decides to hold out, then whatever you can end up drafting a quarterback. You can do whatever after that, but you cannot pass up on somebody like Marvin Harrison Jr. when you have a decent team, decent, not good. Let's be very clear: they're not good. A decent enough team with a decent enough quarterback and a young roster. You cannot pass up on Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm sorry. I get it. Caleb Williams is supposed to be this generational talent, but he's going to go to a, a terrible team and it's going to suck for a while. So you're saying they should trade out of the first pick. I'm saying you trade it to Washington. Okay. Yeah. You just flip it. You, you take two picks. You can start building a little bit more. You just, you get more picks and you just, you just start building because yeah. they have a, they have a young roster. They have a lot. They have, they have some decent talent. They just need to build this team because Caleb Williams is not fixing this team. He's not. Mm-hmm. He's not turning this team around. Justin, you are smoking actual co- cocaine. If you think that Caleb Williams is walking into Chicago, A, willingly, and B, is somehow turning that team around. If they're just wasting a pick on him. And what like Fields' value is nowhere near the value of a first overall pick. It's He's what, worth a second? You guys are both in on this whole... Yeah. Yes! Here we go. Let's see it. Let's hear it. The way you get 
forward in the NBA and the NFL. Oh, oh. <laughs> the way <laughs> the way you like have success in the NFL is having a good quarterback, a quarterback that is a difference maker in the league. You look at the AFC specifically, which is um like going to be like that. They're like a bloodbath, but you can get a huge advantage in the NFC by having a difference maker at quarterback. Caleb Williams would have gone first in the draft last year if he was eligible. This is a guy who's been the first overall pick for two consecutive years, who is supremely talented outside of the pocket, inside of the pocket, had a down year that is like to die for. Like his down year this year is like to die for. Good. Um, he obviously ha- has had a lot of success-, success at USC. He is a far better prospect than Justin Fields ever was and is currently. Yeah, I'm not denying that, but you, if you're saying like, oh yeah, well, Patrick Mahomes was this great quarterback in college. If he went to the Bears, he would have turned it around. No, he wouldn't. No, but you can't, you're going to have to pay Justin Fields 30, 40 million. You think you're not going to have to pay Caleb Williams $700 million? You have to pay him that much money in five years. Bro, Caleb Williams is requesting ownership of the team. He's right requesting now. partial ownership of the team. I don't give him what he wants. Like, oh my God. God, you can you let him play a snap first? I like. I'm not saying Caleb Williams is like going to end up being this, and I don't love the whole like they were trying to choose where he goes and everything. Like I don't love that aspect of it. But you have the opportunity right here to reset your contract clock. Like rookie quarterbacks have a lot more success because they're not getting paid a lot of money. And then with the ninth pick, you can draft. There's a it's a deep receiver class. You don't know if I think Roma Duze and Malik Neighbors will end up coming up before nine, but they could fall back because if another team, um, if like some other players move up in the draft, maybe you get lucky at nine. Maybe you trade up from nine a little bit to get another receiver. Maybe you do that. But if you don't want Caleb Williams, they obviously want Caleb Williams. They should draft him number one overall. They screwed it up last year when they could have drafted CJ Stroud and they decided to trade out of the pick. That was a clear that was clearly a mistake. Um, they made, they should go get the best, the best quarterback in the draft, a quarterback. that's going to be, I think in a similar position as CJ Stroud, where he's going to be great. And no, it's not going to instantly fix your team, but it gives you a lot more of a fighting chance to win an NFL championship than what they have. Now you're not going to win an NFL championship with Justin Fields playing quarterback. I don't care. Also not winning a championship with a team that doesn't have a good roster, Yeah, but you have more of a shot to win an NFL championship. At least if you have the quarterback, right? If you don't have the quarterback, right? You're not winning one. And the, but the Bears don't have the quarterback, right? And you're going to have to pay him $40 million. You're not this. paying Justin Fields $40 million. They pay Daniel Jones $40 million. He won a playoff game. Dude, I don't care if you want a playoff game. Justin Fields is more talented than uh, Daniel Jones. So then why don't you believe in him? Believe in who? Justin Fields. I don't believe in him as much as <laughs> Caleb Williams. Oh, my God. He hasn't played a snap. Justin Fields is going to net a second, a late second, an early third, maybe. Listen, this is Justin Fields' uh, Jalen Hurts leap year. I'm telling you. He's going to be good this season. No, because he you... just needs help around him. Justin Fields is what he is. Are you, wait, are you being legitimate or are you being an asshole? What? Both. Jesus. He, he, he might that. have a leap. Who knows? But, <laughs> but he needs help around him, too. I think it makes the most sense for the Bears, who had a really good second half of the year, to go get the better. Like Justin, I mean, Caleb Williams is a better quarterback than Justin Fields. Can we agree on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to go with the better quarterback, who is cheaper for longer, can spend money in free agency to improve the Who's roster. going to the Bears? Dude, the, everyone follows the contract, the, the money in football. No one goes to teams based on location. They always follow the money. They'll get they'll get guys. Yeah, because surely nobody went ring chasing with the Bucks or the Rams. Never happened. Yeah, it's those are like small like circumstances, but like no, like people didn't sign on the Chiefs this past year because they were like going. They literally chasing. had zero dollars. Yeah, yeah they but, still have zero. The Bears dollars. are going to be able to significantly improve their roster with the increased cap space that Caleb Williams offers. They can get an extra pick for Justin Fields. And the only like DJ Moore is a good receiver. Yeah, That's I'm not like, denying that. Yeah, he, I think he's more of a wide receiver too. But either with nine, you could go get a receiver. You could get a receiver later in the draft with your pick. Like the, people forget, they could get the first pick and the ninth pick. They could just draft an offensive lineman, Caleb Williams, and then they would have a lot better of an offense already set up, and they could actually have success. Like I don't like. But who's your offensive coordinator? Who's calling plays? I don't know exactly. I don't know, but maybe exact. That's my point. There's nothing in this team that can build up a quarterback. You're throwing him in with this all this amazing yeah, but talent. You know, but I could have said the same thing about the Bengals when they drafted Joe Burrow. Like who was like we're like oh man, there were people talking about the Bengals were gonna succeed or not with Joe Burrow because that roster was so bad. There was people talking about him forcing his way out of Cincinnati because 
that roster is so bad. And he was going to be a bum there. Like you don't, you don't know until you know. But then, but that's the thing is that when you look at a team like the Bengals, who had a young head coach, who was an offensive-minded head coach, and they had decent guys, they had decent skill position players. They had Joe Mixon, they had T. Higgins, they had Tyler Boyd. Their defense was solid. Okay, DJ well, Moore is better than all those receivers. Okay, not two of them. What? T. T Higgins and Tyler Boyd combined are better than DJ Moore. Okay, combined, but that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like that having two weapons versus one, and then you draft J- Joe Burrow, who is like, yes, he was like the guy you take, right? Yes, just yes, like Caleb yes, Williams, clear, yes. right? He's the guy you take. Then the next year, remember that he got hurt really bad. Yes, his rookie year. So you're just gonna like say like, all right, we're sacrificing Caleb Williams's ACLs for the first season. He's no, gonna die. But you can't. You're not assuming that Joe Burrow is gonna get hurt here. Well, behind that offensive line, you were. No, like you. It was a concern at least. But the Bears' offensive line is way better than the Bengals was when they drafted Joe Burrow. They're not great. I'll they're, tell you that. Much. I know they're not great. But <laughs> those are guys you can go fix with the money because they're not like offensive linemen don't have don't, like the the market the ring chasing appeal. Oh, uh, dude, I don't know. I don't know about that one, dude. I, they can improve the offensive line. Number one, they can just totally draft an offensive lineman at number nine. Guys are going to fall who are really talented. That okay, that is true. That so you, somebody will fall to them that is going to be solid. But again, they have the um the oh god the guy they drafted this past year from Tennessee. I forget his name. I think it's like uh whatever his name was. Not that good. Yeah, ended up not being that. Good. I know who you're talking about too. He's on my. I oh, I don't down. remember his name. You know, I, whoever. But um, Darnell Wright. Yep. No, yes. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had to pull. Great pull. Great pull. <laughs> yeah, but like you're not guaranteed good offensive liner in the draft. I'm no, sorry. for sure. But it's a deep class. Okay. Yeah, they say that every year. That's fair. Yeah, because but- look at Evan Neal. He was supposed to be this <laughs> god at left tackle, and then oh no, he's a bum. Look at me. Okay, you can't just draft offensive line. No, but at least you could get a quarterback that resets the cap clock, who's better than Justin Fields, and give him a shot to go in there and do something like Joe Burrow did. Give him a chance. Like the Chargers were a bad roster when Justin Justin Herbert went there. They still drafted him. He's had a lot of success there, even though they haven't had playoff success. They still had at least like winning success. I think you can at least go in and say, "Hey, we're getting a quarterback that gives us a chance to win a championship." If you're just getting Marvin Harrison Jr. and hoping that Justin Fields is the guy, what if you find out he's not the guy that year, and then you have to go draft the quarterback next in next year's draft class who isn't better than Caleb Williams? You almost, if you're the Bears, you lucked out this year that you got the number one overall pick. Because you are so lucky because you should have drafted CJ Stroud last year and you would have had the quarterback situation right. You are getting like a free mulligan on the season. If you trade out of it, it's a mistake. At least if you, you can make an argument to me that they trade from one to two and just say, you yeah, know, we like J- Drake May better uh, or we like Drake May enough to get an extra pick from Washington because you can hardball Washington because you sure as hell know they want Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can at least hear the argument like, oh, we dropped from one to three or one to two and we're going to fishing a couple extra picks and still draft a quarterback. I actually like, I would support that idea because you're just going to be like, okay, we're going to, we're uh, still resetting the clock with a pretty gonna, good quarterback. We're going like, to reset, reset the clock. We still think he's going to be, but better. wait, what did he hear his feels in three? Yeah. This is no, weird. he's in four. He's going into his fourth. Yeah. Is it his fourth year? I, I think so. Cause he's a five year rookie contract. Yeah. And he's on his it's last year. I'll look when he was drafted. Yeah, just check that real quick. But like, I yeah, I understand like trading back to like kind of like pick up a quarterback earlier. I could it could make um, sense. I just think like you, this is a just Caleb Williams is one of the better quarterback prospects prospects we've had in a really long time. The idea that like they just they don't have the they don't have not only the roster construction they don't have like the like they don't have the coach they don't have the offensive coordinator they don't have yeah um, so he's he's going into his fourth year he's going into his fourth year Mm -hmm. okay that's okay yeah. But my thing is, like, they, they don't have, like, the administration level. I agree. No, and I, I 100% agree that they need to, like, they need to fix those aspects of the team because they're not going to have success with Caleb if they don't fix those aspects of the team. But at least if you get the quarterback right, you can start. Like, that is that is a start. I don't think drafting another receiver and then the quarterback not being right and then having to go through this whole entire quarterback process again it is the right idea. Just go get the right quarterback and then just try to figure out everything else around him. All right, so you're just throwing to the wolves and praying to God. I mean, I don't think it's throwing to the wolves. Like the Bears, like they had a competent season. They're not like they're not like the bro. They were the ninth overall pick. It's that, a lot better than being like the Panthers. Well, and they 
But like, <laughs> also they had they played Tyler Baggett or whatever his name is for like Badgett, Badgett for like the beginning like for certain games because Fields was hurt. Like they 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 were probably like a the uh, had deserved like the twelfth or thirteenth pick besides from injuries and they started off slow and they got a little hotter. Well, yeah, and the Giants were also like three games away, or three plays away from making the playoffs. We don't care about what ifs. They were ninth overall pick. Yeah, but you can say there it's like okay, the Giants roster people sh- could like be like dogging on the Giants. You could be like, well, they're actually a better roster if you kind of look at. How things how things shifted around, like, but what if so, don't like that doesn't matter though. No, no, I I, I agree. I like, had okay. the ninth overall pick, okay. Okay. but their raw. I think their roster is it's not like throwing them to the wolves like you would be like if, like if the Panthers drafted the Panthers actually had the first overall pick and drafted Caleb Williams, you'd be like like Bryce Young. It's like well, you really just threw Bryce Young to the wolves. Like you have nothing on that roster. The Bears have a lot more on their roster than like those other bottom feeder teams do. Like, again, their offensive line isn't horrible. It's not great, but it's okay. Um. Like you have that's DJ fair. Moore, Cole commits a good tight end. Um, that's about and it. And then your de- your defense is fine. So like, they kind of, they overpaid a lot for some of their linebackers. Yes, uh, and they they're going to Sweat is huge. Uh, Montez Sweat's huge. They're gonna well, they're gonna need to pay Montez Sweat, and they're gonna need to pay Jalen Johnson, their corner, who's mm. been really good. Mm. So that's really gonna hit their cap hard. I would say if you're the if you're the Bears, draft Caleb Williams number one. You're gonna have to figure out your organization. Hope you have the right or- offensive coordinator, and then at nine, draft someone for Caleb as a weapon. Whether that's Brock Bowers falling, whether that's Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze falling. If not, draft an offensive lineman to make his life a little bit better. Like pretty much be like Caleb, we're contributing everything to you. Like all of our picks in the second round are gonna be for you. Like we're gonna give you the tools to succeed, and just try to like w- and try to win that way and build up the roster. Because if you like, if you gave him to the Commanders and the Commanders found the next like Patrick Mahomes. And you missed out on that. In addition to missing CJ Stroud, like that is horrible. But then, like, what? Like, do, what do you trade Fields then? Yeah, absolutely trade Fields. You'll net a second round pick. Yeah, I guess because other teams aren't in better quarterback positions. Like, if you look at teams like the Falcons, they won too many games. Yeah, they can't get a quarterback. Um, if you look at teams like the Patriots, like I don't, I don't think we can get into the Patriots another day. But I don't think the Patriots would draft a quarterback because I think it's a similar situation to what you're describing with the Bears, except. Whoever the Patriots are going to get a quarterback is a lot more shaky than Caleb Williams. Yeah. Like it's not like it's a Caleb Williams, Drake May, um, Jaden Daniels, kind of like one A, one B. Yeah, situation. no, it's not. It's like Caleb Williams is one A, and people are three, three A as yeah. the next. Like there's a huge gap mm-hmm. down there. So um, you can make the argument to me. That it's like okay, Jaden, I don't like Daniels that much. Um, I think he's like you can kind of like he's not a can't miss prospect. Caleb Williams is can't miss. You have the first overall pick. Either you go and draft him number one overall. Or you make sure you get a king's ransom for him, and you have a plan at quarterback. Because I don't think Justin Fields is the plan. You need to reset the clock. You're going to end up paying him forty million dollars, thirty million dollars, completely eat up your cap for a non difference maker at quarterback. There's just too much. There's just too much evidence at this point. You know if a quarterback's okay. good or not. Okay. All right. You just draft Marvin Harrison Jr. number one overall, and just let the Commanders have him. Well, obviously you trade the pick, but yeah, you trade the pick. Yeah. It's like Marvin. I under like the receiving court would look good, but it's just like you're gonna wonder the whole time if uh, Justin Fields is the quarterback. That's right. Like who's coming out of the class next year? Who's gonna be like, oh, we could just draft him if we're asked again, and he'll be better than Justin Fields. Well, in the next draft class, it's light, but then the one after that, it's actually gonna be pretty heavy. So you're gonna wait two more years with those. That- oh Jesus Christ! We're waiting two more years. And we're building up a roster. Good lord. Yeah, but you could wait one more year with have a down year with Caleb Williams the first year, and then wait one year and just get yeah. A and he can receiver. also just shatter his leg because their offensive line is bad. You can't like assume he's gonna get injured though, bro. Yes, I can. No, Look you what can't. happened to Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe also Joe Burrow is like objectively injury prone. He's been injured so much. Well, I wonder why. It, it doesn't. The offensive line doesn't help, but also he just gets injured a lot. I mean, bro's like oh my God. breaking his finger. He's get, like hurting his knee. Like, yeah, dude's, 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 yeah. dude's always injured. Also, the Bears' offensive line is like comparing the comparing the Bears' offensive line to the Bengals' offensive line is like sacrilegious. That, that Bengals' All offensive right. line has been terrible for years. Yeah, it has, and the Bears' offensive line hasn't been that much better. It's at least a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit. I can't believe you're saying that they should not draft Caleb Williams. I'm not saying they sh- like, look, here's the thing. I'm not saying that like, uh, honestly, at the end of the day, I think they do. I think they do. But I think just the way their team is constructed right now, they're not ready for a quarterback. I, I objectively agree that they're not ready for a quarterback, but a lot of teams who pick the quarterbacks and pe- people who've had really good quarterbacks, like 
come to their teams. Like they're not always ready for the quarterback because there's a reason they're picking so low. But then if they're not, I, I know in the Bears' case they're at nine and they get the. But pick then up. at that case, if like if you're not ready for the quarterback, then you keep Fields and you sit Caleb Williams. Yeah, but then what? Okay, but you can make that argument totally. Yeah, I think you could totally make the argument. You draft Caleb Williams, keep Fields for a year. He sits under him and learns. Like I, I think that's a fine idea. Yeah, but you're still taking Williams. And, okay, and and doing that because you just that quarterback you can't miss. If you want to say like I think it's a fair point, like yeah. they're not ready for a quarterback, sit him or trade Fields and just go get Andy Dalton and just say he's playing for the year. <laughs> you get him back on the Bears <laughs> roster. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Like you just get you just get a quarterback who's okay and say hey he's gonna sit behind. Um, or get a guy who wants to like prove himself. I don't know what's a good Marcus Mario. I don't know what contract he was on, but like, hey, Marcus Gardner Minshew. Is he? I think he's still on the Colts. Yeah. I think he signed a two-year deal. Oh, did he? Um, oh, okay. But but let's just say Marcus Mariota for conversation. Screw like, it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Marcus, want to come play quarterback for six or more games for us, depending on how you play? We're gonna sit Williams for a couple games and let him learn the offense and make sure our team is good before we throw him out to the Wolves. I think that's a fair point. Um, but. You need to make sure you get the quarterback right, and the quarterback Caleb Williams is the most, the most safe pick you're going to get at quarterback in the next decade. My brain is thinking. <laughs> I on. say you weigh your options, see where you get more for field. You'll see where you get more and what benefits you more at the end. Because the Bears are in a position where they hold all the cards, basically. They can, they can choke all the commanders for whatever well, they want. Yeah, the, the Bears are in a great position. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they also have the ninth pick, which is yeah. yeah. The, you either choke hold the commanders and get a lot of stuff from them, or you see what people are willing to offer for fields. So you're going to start screaming at me. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> but okay. You trade fields. Okay. You draft Caleb Williams. You sign Russell Wilson. You, yeah. Okay. Men. Yeah. You sign him for a vet minimum. If anybody's going to be able to teach Caleb Williams, it's probably going to be Russell Wilson. He's not. Uh, he's not great now. Yeah. You mean the father that stepped up? Yes, the father that stepped up. <laughs> like, good mentor. I don't think it's bad. I think Russ is going to want to go to a team. That's he's probably going to want to. Yeah. Yeah. This is of course the hype. Yeah, yeah. Like that is Russell just like stupid. Wilson, but, like, you are an Atlanta Falcon. <laughs> yeah. Like. Like, I could definitely see that a lot more, but like that's, I think that's, you know what? I think we found a middle ground. I think you still draft Caleb Williams, but I think you sit him. Yeah. I think sitting quarterbacks, like any, I'm not trying to be like, Caleb Williams is the closest thing to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes sat for yeah. an entire year. Yeah. So I think at least you could say, let's get another guy in here. And you could tell Caleb in like his, like when we were drafting, like, look, line, man, like, like we're, we're going to sit, we're going to sit you because we want to make sure that our team actually is like, we want to be able to protect you and give yeah. you the best shot. So possible. we're going to make sure Darnell Wright And, um, we're going to, the pen, kid from Penn state, um, we're going to, Ashanu, we're going to yeah. make sure that they can block or Joe alt yeah, or, they're not, uh, Joe Alt would not be a bold, but even what, they nine, get nine or, yet. or like, there's the, um, kid from Oregon state. Yes. Well, yeah. Oregon state. Yeah. yeah. Um, like we're gonna make sure those guys, fu- Fuga, yes, um, yeah. they're like we're gonna make sure they can block, yeah, and they're gonna protect you. And we're gonna make sure the receivers are good, and that receiving mm-hmm. core is gonna handle itself. And then we'll put you out there. Mm-hmm. So you sit and like sit behind a guy who's a vet, yeah, um, and and learn the playbook. I think that yeah, that would be a very viable mm-hmm. option that I could I could see for. But to just I, I'm all for setting quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. To, to just miss on Caleb Williams would just be a situation where I think that would be like, I mean. It's everyone who talks about Patrick Mahomes and they're like, look at the guys like like Justin Ross taken above Patrick Mahomes. It's like, I think the bank, even though the Bengals have Joe Burrow, the Bengals want to have that one back. Like, you yeah. don't, yeah. Mitchell Trubisky yeah. taken above Patrick Mahomes. Like, By go, the Bears. <laughs> and then you look at these teams who make that mistake at quarterback, make the mistake of not drafting the right guy. They're in no man's land. Like, we're like, oh, Pittsburgh Steelers, they're second favorite to get Justin Fields. And like, <laughs> oh, can they get Russell Wilson? And we're like, they're pretty much like we're bouncing around the idea of what mid quarterback can they get? Yeah, but you got a stud, a potential stud right in front of you. Mm-hmm. Pick him, and I think like if you had to sit him for a year, yeah. trying to think of other vets who could you could sit him behind. I'm Even like that, if Seattle wants to go get like a new young quarterback, like yeah, maybe you, if you go get Gino, Gino yeah, like that'd yeah. be a fine guy to get him behind. I don't know if Joe Flacco's contract's up, but even genuinely, like, you should try to. You could go get Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. yeah. Like get him from the Giants. Like he always ends up somehow like yeah. showing young quarterbacks the ropes. Like or even if it's a kind Colin of a young guy who Kaepernick. wants to prove himself. Like this is this is, a, this is a little bit out there. But like a Kyle Trask, and you're like, we'll give you the keys for a little bit. 
because you were just going to make sure you like we're going to give that you is a- insane. <laughs> like I'm, I'm thinking of an, a young quarterback who probably wants like to like younger show teams that he can actually play. And then, but he's still been in the league long enough to at least like have a guy sit behind Tommy him. DeVito. No, <laughs> you know what? If Caleb goes to the Bears, I'm all okay with that because that means he won't be in the NFC East. That's you know what? Like fair, Jimmy Garoppolo. Honestly, yeah, not bad, not like, terrible. He's been around the league. He played for Bill Belichick. He's gonna get cut by the Raiders. He's played yeah. for Kyle Shanahan. Like he, oh, yeah. he's suspended. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh crap, man. So P. Decent still threw more interceptions. Yeah, yeah that. So I mean, that's, that's like crazy. That's what happens when we didn't record about the, uh, football. Yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo getting getting busted for, for performance enhancing drugs and still being ass. <laughs> didn't even enhance anything. Uh, not nothing. Not nothing was enhanced from that man. Good lord. Don't even suspend him at that point. God damn. That's bad. That's really bad. You know what's funny? Matt Nagy oh, helped like boy. develop Patrick Mahomes into like what he was because he was offensive. He was a quarterback coach while Patrick Mahomes is there. He goes to the Bears for the to be the offensive court. He was the head coach, right? Yeah, yeah, head coach of the Bears. Now the guy closest comparison. You're not. No one's ever going to be Patrick Mahomes. But the closest comparison to Patrick Mahomes, Caleb Williams coming out of the draft. Matt Nagy's not the coach of the Bears anymore. Yeah, it's like the complete like worst situation that you would prefer to have. Yep, but. Well, that was a lot. I didn't I didn't expect us to get that into the weeds about the Bears. Um, we're we're going to start fist fighting over the Bears. Yeah. Even though even though at the end of the day, we don't care. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I want Caleb Williams to be good, though. I, I, want- I he it, it is good for the league at the end of the day to have good players in good situations. Like Because, again, as much as everybody hates, oh, Patrick Mahomes glazing, whatever, it's good for the league mm-hmm. to have great players. Like Yeah. And if you've watched this far and you're going to come back when we do. Dear God. When we do, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dear God. And thanks for watching. Um <laughs> And then if you if you see me in the NFC e, the uh, AFC East predictions say or like our division say that the, I don't think that the Patriots draft a quarterback. I know it sounds hypocritical. I know. I, I know it. it goes against like my logic with the Bears <laughs> pick, but it's it's solely based on the premise that I don't like Caleb Williams is a, a huge class above what Drake May and uh, Jaden Daniels. Jane Daniels and I think Drake May is even in a separate class than Daniels. To be honest with you, um, JJ McCarthy will be a Patriot. Dude, like a third pick God. Patriot? Yeah. Dude, that would be nuts. Not the Michigan quarterback <laughs> going to the Patriots. Jim Harbaugh was <laughs> right. I've seen this script before. Damn it. <laughs> what happens when they draft the Michigan quarterback not like in the seventh round? He's going to be worse. It's yeah. an inverse relationship. Oh, <laughs> the later you draft the Michigan quarterback, the better they are. <laughs> We're delusional. It's time to go. It's if time you, to go. If you did stick around this far in the podcast, thank you. I was a little bit concerned we didn't have a lot to talk about I'm today. So tired. This is our first, <laughs> this is our first uh, go around on the on the NBA in a while, but we sure filled up that time with Doc Rivers, uh, the All Star Game, and, and we found a way to talk about the NFL, even though there's no NFL <laughs> season for freaking a half an hour. So we appreciate you guys watching. Oh like, comment, God. subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot, and we will see you next time on the Coconut Curry Podcast. Bears. Draft Barack Bowers. Will be a New York chat. <laughs> what?